Thank you, thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, thank you, Jim and the CSO team for putting such a great event together. It's been really enriching to listen to all the speakers this morning. Once again, good morning. My name is Rajiv. I'm a chief engineer and research domain leader at Honda Research Institute. A little bit about Honda Research Institute. It's a lesser known Honda company that is separated out from the mothership. Uh, we're a global network of companies with locations in Japan, Germany, and here in the US. Our core mission and focus is to do beyond next research. Uh, and innovation in the space, we have about globally about 150, a little over 150 researchers focusing broadly in the areas of computer science and material science and all threads under that, as you can imagine. Uh, I'm specifically from the Ohio, Columbus, Ohio office, uh, and we call that 99P Labs. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. But in Ohio, we specifically focus on four research domains, as you can see on the slide here, sustainable energy and materials, mobility, human computer interaction, digital twin technologies, software defined cooperative intelligence. Again, as you can imagine, uh, AI is a big part of what we are doing within HRI. And, uh, but today in my talk, I won't talk so much about the kind of uh, detailed activities we're doing in that, but the platform or the engine that we have created within HRI and 99P Labs to uh, allow us to do uh, innovation research at speed, at scale, allow us to learn, pivot, adapt, and also cut through the hype. So a little bit uh, from a background point of view, Honda as a company globally is a very entrepreneurial company. Uh, till date, we, uh, on a daily basis, are operating and conducting business with our founders operating philosophies uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and at the centerpiece of everything that we do. Uh, also, while we have an excellent uh, leadership and executive team globally, uh, Honda is, uh, is also a very much a bottom-up company, which means that there are lots and lots of grassroots initiatives that happen within the Honda ecosystem. 99P Labs was one of them uh, that started around 2017. A group of us got together to really start brainstorming and talking about the changing mobility landscape. Uh, what is that going to do to the automotive domain, especially our company, the new technologies that are penetrating into our domain, uh, including AI, and also the changing customer need uh, that, uh, that uh, we need to be aware and educated about. Now, all of this very quickly came down to the bigger question that uh, we're doing research and innovation in a certain way within the company, which is very insight out. So in this new world that we are going to enter, how might, how might we change or pivot our approach for research and innovation from being inside out to outside in, considering, this, uh, considering the technologies and changing the customer need as well? So in 2018, very quickly, we founded 99P Labs with our partner in Columbus, the Ohio State University, with a mission to create sustainable mobility futures through collaborative research and data-driven innovation. Of course, at 99P Labs, we're not just limited to working with OSU. Uh, we have an expanded relationship here at Carnegie Mellon and other universities as well that I'll talk about. Uh, but you must be wondering why 99P Labs? Again, as I mentioned, uh, our founder had this uh, very famous quote which says, success represents the 1% of work which results from 99% that is called failure. And that, in our interpretation, was 99 pivots to success. So that essentially originated the word 99P and that became the name of our lab as well. So just wanted to share a little bit of the history over there. But since, since the founding of this lab, one of our core sort of operating principles and DNA was that, that we, we explained to our executive team as well that this ecosystem is going to be different than what we have traditionally been doing in the, in the larger Honda company. We want to create an ecosystem of shared and for shared value creation. Again, with two big ideas, one is how can we strengthen our collaborative research with outside partners, including our university network, to co-create new knowledge and technologies that benefits Honda and society? And the second one is to leverage better university brain power 
and external resources for synergies that tie back to Honda Research Institute and the global R&D organization as well. Some of the early metrics that uh, we track uh, as part of uh, how, how we pivot our whole operation as well and adapt our operation is around the speed of innovation, building and publishing, uh, publi uh, publishing joint IP, uh, developing open source software, ex leveraging external funding and our partner network as well. Now, all of this in terms of our university, one of the big things we wanted to change was how can, uh, was, was this whole idea of changing this notion of having a transactional relationship with the faculty or researcher at the university to building a very collaborative and partnership model. And this became the essence of how we operate over here in, at 99P Labs. Again, the big idea is that we want to build a trusting relationship with the researcher, with the faculty, on a common problem with funding, with common funding and resources and being able to do collaborative work with the primary objective to create new knowledge that first and foremost benefits society. But then the secondary and the tangential outcomes immediately come out that there's researcher benefit that's, tied, that's aligned with their research interests and there's company benefit that's tied back to the company benefit and this becomes a cycle of innovation for us as well. So this is sort of uh, the big model that we operate with our university partners on, including Carnegie Mellon here. How does this translate on a day-to-day -day basis? Again, it all goes back to sort of our sensing and portfolio funnel. Right at the top, as you can imagine, uh, there's a lot of sensing that we do. Uh, we're tasked with uh, doing, uh, of thinking beyond next, which means technologies and potentially products that, that will potentially come out seven to 20 years out. So it's a very long tail sort of thinking that we need to put in place. We need to uh, be really agile and iterative in trying to understand that. So right at the top, we have this idea of sensing where we're looking internal to the global Honda network as well, but also externally, we talk to a lot of our university partners, other public and private entities as well. Now those ideas and help us create hypotheses around what we may want to focus on based on our research domains that we have. And they start funneling down into what early states, something that is really vague, we don't know what this really means, we don't know what this might transpire into, they become student activities that turn into shorter term uh, sort of activities such as hackathons and the student challenges as well. Now as those solution concepts start coming out, we start hardening our hypotheses and our validation, which then funnels down into larger things that we, we want to develop the next step. So this is where we've established a very robust student capstone program, and I'll show you a little bit more detail where we get, we work with multiple different programs for students to come together, build out, hash out the ideas further, and give us uh, more insights of things that we, we didn't know about or that we can learn from. All of that, as those ideas start getting built out, of course, things start getting killed out also because we can't do everything. And those, the ones that do continue flow into our research funnel, these are long-term research projects that the company has an interest in and is put, willing to put in significant time and resources. Again, these are research projects that we'll do both internal to Honda and with our university partners, which then flows into our product and business roadmaps as well. Now, again, it doesn't have to go only in one direction. If there are certain hypotheses that we have very strong conviction on, that we're sure it's absolutely aligned with the company right from day one, we can skip steps and go directly to those ideas. And you can see that uh, all the deliverables that come out of the research, we do a lot of public facing work. So we publish a lot, uh, not just in terms of papers, but blogs and information as well that's available to the world. And then for them to come back and even give us feedback and read as well. Now, I, I do want to talk about the sort of robust capstone program that I think is very important. This, this, pro, this, this program that we have built really al has allowed us to use it as a tool, a mechanism for us to cut through the hype, build out, hash out ideas further, uh, leverage and understand student ideas, methods, tools, 
their creativity that we can bring back within our teams. Again, the big benefits that we see out of doing multiple, multiple capstone programs is this idea that there are always parts of a research project that don't necessarily fit into everything. There are always threads that come out and those threads, we can go to a student team and ha have them validate and bring it back as well. Through these projects, new ideas come out. So they sort of become seeds for new research initiatives as well within the company. It helps as education and training for our own associates, research associates. While they're very much laser focused in one area, this gives them an opportunity to go outside the company, outside of their day to day and work with students, bring out their creativity back into our day to day operations. And then of course the collaborative growth and community building, which is an important piece. Right here at CMU, on an average annual basis, we're doing about 12 to 15 capstones a year. Uh, as a whole program, we do about 20, 23 capstones. You can see these are all the programs that we just do at CMU. We have touched many different schools, many different programs uh, that, and has, that has produced a fantastic output for us. And we've been very fortunate, as you can see right at the bottom, uh, to partner with CSL as well. And in this just past semester, we've, uh, we've had two fantastic student teams, one of which you will uh, one of which you'll hear from right after uh, I finish my talk. Uh, just to give you an idea, here are two problem prompts, just to sort of give you an idea of how we're thinking about LLMs, very early concepts, vague concepts. So one of the prompts that we gave uh, to the CSL team was how can we use large language models to categorize and interpret mobility patterns to personalize service recommendations as well. Or the second one is exploring an AI-based agent that acts as an attendee in a large trade show. Think of it as indoor navigation. These are all interesting problems to us, and of course this is a way for us to sort of dabble in and understand AI technologies as well. Now, once these capstones get done, what do we do with it, right? It's very important. This information needs to flow within the company and outside as well. We need a way to generate feedback, so our team uh, puts in a lot of effort to try to summarize a whole semester's work that the, the students have put in, all the hard work that they put in into this sort of one slide format. This is an example from actually last fall that we worked with CSL on, where we talk about the problem statement, the description, the key highlights that came out of the key learnings that came out of uh, each of these capstones, and also links to the blogs, reports, videos, whatever the student teams have produced. And this gets fired off to the whole global Honda organization, which allows us to not everyone's going to reach back out to us, but the interested people will come back, give us ideas, allow us to uh, iterate, allow us to strengthen our hypothesis. So this is one way, but we also post all of this on our LinkedIn channel as well in the public domain, uh, because we want outside feedback in, outside in too. It's very important to understand how the whole ecosystem's thinking about these problems because we can't operate. Our, our core belief is that we have to really cooperate and collaborate with many different participants in the ecosystem. Now again, with this, I'll, I'll end my talk because I really want you guys to listen to the student team on the hard work that they've put in. But uh, please uh, reach out to us. A lot of our material is online. Uh, we publish a lot of our research, uh, blogs, students. You can reach us out on LinkedIn. On our, You can check out all the work that we do on our Medium blog. And of course, my email is also here. If anyone's interested, I'd be happy to chat. But once again, thank you for your time. And I'm very excited for the student team to speak after me. Thank you very much. <laughs>